Uh, so we did some redox reactions, uh, gain of electrons, uh, U reduction happens, uh, the charge becomes negative. Loss of electrons, the charge keeps on increasing. Okay, that is one thing that we did. And then we talked about uh, oxidation states, I told you. Uh, that ionic compounds uh, uh, oxidation state is the charge on the ion, like NaCl, Na is plus one and Cl is minus one. So that is the oxidation state. Uh, but then I talked about uh, covalent compounds. I told you that when you talk about uh, covalent compounds, uh, they've got a different meaning, like they don't have any charges. So what is oxidation state when you talk about covalent compounds? What do you, what, what does, what does it mean? So I told you it has, uh, because no one is gaining or losing electrons. So I told you it has something to do with electronegativity and we had discussed electronegativity that uh, it's the tendency for an atom to gain a share, gain electrons basically. And elements become more electronegative when you move to the right of the periodic table. They have a greater tendency to gain electrons. Why? Because they've got more protons like lithium has three protons and fluorine over here has nine protons. So the attraction for electrons is a lot is a lot more when it comes to gaining of electrons. Electronegativity increases and electronegativity also increases up the group. Smaller atoms, they are less shielded by electrons and they've got stronger attraction for electrons. We discussed this. So the elements, and we, and we came up with this, uh, I mean, I, I posted this picture as well. This kind of shows you which elements are electronegative, which ones are not. Uh, this corner over here is very electronegative. Uh, elements really like to gain electrons. The ones over here on the on the bottom left are not very electronegative. There instead, there's another word that's electropositive that, that they tend to lose electrons. So we had a discussion on this that not all atoms kind of uh, uh, like to gain electrons or lose electrons. They have this tendency to. Uh, some elements have a very strong tendency to gain electrons. Some elements have a very strong tendency to actually lose electrons. So this is what electronegativity was. And we had a discussion on that. Now, remember the whole point is, I want to talk about oxidation states. Like what is meant by the term oxidation state? So, so the thing was, and let's talk about this. What is it? What is oxidation state? Especially when it comes to covalent molecules. So the thing is that in covalent molecules, you've got, uh, you've got, uh, you've got sharing of electrons. You've got H and you've got Cl. Now your uh, H atom just has one electron and you've got your Cl atom that's got uh, seven electrons. and they end up sharing electrons. Like the Cl needs electrons, so it's going to pull the electron from H and it's going to start sharing with it. So that's an HCl molecule. So an HCl molecule has a covalent bond. Remember, no one ended up gaining electrons, no one ended up losing electrons. So they have this covalent bond that's between them. So there's an H and there's a Cl and they have this covalent bond between them. And in the covalent bond, there are two electrons getting shared. There's, there are two electrons getting shared as shown in the diagram above. So you've got these two electrons being shared. Now the whole issue is, is the sharing happening equally or not? Why is the sharing happening in the first place? Because Cl wants to gain electrons and at the same time, H also wants to gain electrons. So they kind of both really, really like to, uh, so both of them are, are, I mean, they really like to gain electrons, right? So the electrons are stuck in the middle, but now we're going to talk about where do the charges come from? So the point is, our assumption is that the electrons are at the moment equally shared, which is not really true because if you look over here and if you look at the table over here, you'll, you'll notice that Cl is very electronegative. That means I mean, this one, we notice that, uh, I mean, this is your CL over here. That's that's an extremely electronegative atom. And you know about CL, that it likes to gain electrons, right? 
So the thing is that the electrons are not going to be equally shared. Cl over here will have a much stronger attraction or it's going to have a much stronger attraction for electrons. So the tendency for the atom to pull electrons for Cl is going to be a lot more. So the thing that will happen is that the electrons that, are, that we think are right in the middle, they're not actually in the middle, they're actually closer to Cl, which means that Cl gets a slight negative charge and the H gets a slight positive charge. So remember, whenever you have covalent bonds, the electrons are not equally distributed. What happens is the electrons are always closer to one of the atoms. So if I if I show this, these electrons would be kind of closer to Cl because Cl is kind of pulling those electrons strongly. Is this, is this point clear? That Cl is the more electronegative atom? Do you remember it's like a, so Cl is the, just one second. So Cl is the more electronegative more electronegative atom. So, so Cl, remember it's like a tug of war. Both atoms are trying to pull those electrons. I mean, whenever you have a sharing of electrons, it's like even though if it has even if, uh, though it has more number of shells, remember Cl is like in the table, we said that uh, you move to the right, electronegativity increases. Uh, so Cl is one of the most electronegative atoms. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of shells. It's, it's, it, it actually just has three shells. Uh, fluorine has two shells. So it's not that big an atom. I mean, if you if the shells increase, the electronegativity kind of decreases, it drops. Afrin, is this point clear? I mean, that... So, I mean, your point is fine that it has more shells, but like if I go back, remember the two factors. One of them is shells, smaller atoms, they are less shielded by electrons. So they have stronger attraction for electrons. So you're right there. But what, hap what happens when you move to the right of the periodic table? The electronegativity increases, you've got more protons. So CL has 17 protons. So the attraction for electrons is higher because of that as well. So Afin, is the point clear? Okay, so I mean, you just have to remember that there are two factors. So the ones in the corner, they're the ones that are more electronegative. Now there's another issue actually, which is like, there is no H atom, where is the H atom? Uh, like the H atom, remember this, is can be anywhere in the pure table. Like if you look at any pure table, the H atom is always floating on top. So remember H, I mean, I'm going to write this over here, that H and carbon have similar electronegativity. A uh, reason I want to talk about carbon with H is that, uh, so I'm just going to write this down, H and carbon have similar they've got similar electro negativity. Uh, but, still, but still Cl is more electro. I mean, I, I'm, I, I can I can look at the polling scale. I mean, you just need to know the trend, trends. So I'll just open the polling scale, which has uh, values as well on how electronegative the atom is. So maybe it's too small. We can't see it. I said, but anyways, uh, like you can have a look, like H and carbon are kind of, uh, I mean, they're kind of the same shade. Uh, Cl is slightly darker in shade. So Cl is more electronegative. So coming back to the point, the point was that when you have a covalent bond, you can now listen carefully. The point is when you have, and just hold on one second. I said, so the point was that when you have two atoms, the electrons are not always shared equally. 
uh, the electrons are always closer to one of the atoms. Uh, so, although it's a covalent bond, what you do is, remember in redox reactions, we're only interested in who gains electrons, who loses electrons. So we think like oxidation state for covalent compounds is that we treat it as if it is ionic. What that means is Cl is more electronegative. So we're going to assume that Cl gains those electrons. Like even though it's not completely gaining those electrons, it's only partially gaining those electrons. Like the electrons are only slightly closer to Cl. Uh, we just think or treat it as if it's ionic. We give Cl a minus one oxidation state and we give H a plus one oxidation state. What that basically indicates is that Cl is going to gain electrons and H is going to lose electrons, which in this case, I mean, they're not going to fully gain or lose electrons. The electrons are just very, very slightly closer to Cl. Uh, but uh, we're going to treat it as if it's ionic. I mean, is the point clear? What is meant by oxidation state for ionic compounds? Like they don't really have a minus one charge or they don't have a, have a plus one charge. What the charges indicate is that the electrons, even though it's a covalent bond, the electrons are slightly closer to Cl. Afri, is this point clear? Mars, Emma, is this clear? Oswa, is this clear? Yes. Aja, similarly, NaCl. When you have a huge difference in electronegativity, like NaCl, the concept is the same. Remember, ionic and covalent is a spectrum. Like if you have NaCl, we know it's not it's not a it's not a covalent compound. We know, but I'm I'm assuming let's let's assume that it's a covalent compound. Ionic compounds are elements or or uh, compounds that have huge differences in electronegativity. So chlorine over here is very electronegative. And this one over here is a uh, very less electronegative, or you can call it electropositive. Like if I look at the table over here, you'll notice that uh, sodium is somewhere over here, so it has it has very low electronegativity. So sodium is right on the extreme left. One second. As I said, sodium is on the extreme left, Cl is on the extreme right, it's very electronegative. So there's a huge difference in electronegativity. So the point is, like in this case, kind of the same thing happens, but to, an, to a much greater extent. The greater extent is that Cl is so electronegative that the electrons get completely gained by Cl. And Cl gets a complete minus one charge and Na gets a plus one charge because the electrons are not going to be shared. So it's exactly the same covalent. Uh, I mean, the same, uh, I mean, covalent and ionic don't have that much of a difference. The only difference is that in ionic, you've got, uh, so whenever you have an ionic compound, you have a huge difference in electronegativity. One of the atoms is very electronegative. The other one is very less electronegative. And when you have covalent compounds, then the only thing is that there is going to be less difference in electronegativity. So it's a, it's a tug of war between atoms. One trying to gain electrons, the other one trying to lose electrons. So if uh, yes, exactly. This is the reason why we call uh, AlCl3 covalent. I mean, my bigger point is that covalent and ionic are not uh, are not uh, two different ends of a spectrum. They basically it's it's one continuous spectrum. You've got ionic compounds. You've got you've got covalent compounds. And there's a lot of in-betweens. So there's a spectrum. Okay, there's a gradual change. So if the difference in electronegativity is huge, like over here, there's a difference in electronegativity is huge. 
the electrons are going to be completely gained by one of the atoms and the other one is going to lose electrons it's like a tug of war the electrons would be would be going towards cl and cl would become minus 1 and na would become plus 1 but covalent compounds are not any different the exact same thing is happening there as well except that the difference in electronegativity is lesser you've got cl which is electronegative you've got h i mean the difference is not that huge so the cl will slightly pull the electrons closer to itself but it won't be able to gain them so it's going to have a slight negative charge this one will have a slight positive charge but when it comes to oxidation states you treat it as if it's ionic i said what's a what's a perfectly covalent compound a perfectly covalent compound is like if i have a perfectly covalent compound So when is something perfectly covalent? When there is absolutely no difference in electronegativity. So, so exactly Cl2. So when there is absolutely no difference. In electro. Electronegativity. There has to be difference now. So, I mean, the Cl molecule is one example. If you have uh, a Cl2 molecule, you've got one Cl, you've got another Cl, and you've got electrons stuck in the middle. Uh, both atoms are trying to pull those electrons, right? So you've got electrons stuck in the middle. Uh, so this atom, Cl, is trying to pull electrons. The other Cl is also trying to pull electrons. But both are equally electronegative. So the electrons are going to stay right in the middle. That's going to be a perfectly covalent molecule and the electrons would be exactly in the middle. So remember, it's a spectrum. Absolutely no difference in electronegativity, the molecule is going to be perfectly covalent. But most of the time, even in covalent molecules, you have some difference in electronegativity. So, so the electrons are not perfectly shared. The electrons are always closer to one of the atoms. And then when there's a huge difference in electronegativity, then the electrons get completely gained by one of the atoms. So is this clear to everyone? Amna, is this clear? Sidra, Raheed, is this clear? Oswa? Yes. Sir? Yes. Sir, I mean, if you give them examples, then all the diatomic elements will come to their examples. Yes, I mean, H2's molecule, that would be perfectly covalent, okay? But, but in, in H2's molecule, that would be perfectly covalent, that would be perfectly covalent, okay? But an HCl molecule is not going to be perfectly covalent because okay, the electrons will not be exactly in the middle. Cl is other electronegative, so electrons will be closer to Cl. Okay, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so the point was, I mean, why did we study electronegativity in the first place? We wanted to know that in the covalent molecule, we have studied that no one gains or loses electrons. Okay, we have studied it. And we said, uh, but we started, when we talk, talked about oxidation states, we started calling H as plus one and we started calling carbon as minus four. So where are the charges coming from? So this is where the charges are coming from. That even though if it's covalent, the electrons are going to be closer to one of the atoms. So we're going to, we're going to treat it as if it's ionic. And if, if somebody is going to ask you who gains electrons, we're going to say CL gains electrons. Like the two electrons are closer to Cl, so we're going to say Cl is ga gaining electrons and Cl is minus one because the reduction and oxidation is all about who gains electrons, who loses electrons. They don't care whether it's gaining electrons partially, electron gain kar hai, ya pura gain kar hai. they don't care. Uh, it's it's all about it's all about who gains electrons, who loses electrons. So the point is, so the point is, uh. When we talk about reduction in oxidation, I'm going to say that Cl gains electrons. It's minus one, and H gain H loses electrons. It's plus one. So we're going to we're going to find the oxidation state of other covalent molecules. Just one second. So let's try and find out oxidation states of other covalent molecules. So I've got I've got a water molecule. We know it's it's a covalent molecule. It's uh, it has H, and there's another H. 
अब कोई मुझे बताए कि हुज मोर इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव एच और ओ ओ ठीक है लाइक इफ यू इफ यू लुक एट द एट द टेबल ओवर है ओ इज आई मीन ओ इज प्रॉब्ली वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन इट्स राइट इन द कॉर्नर इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव एटम्स ठीक है इट्स राइट इन द कॉर्नर ओवर है सो ओ इज वेरी इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव सो किसके पास ये इलेक्ट्रॉन्स होंगे दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वुड बी क्लोज टू ऑक्सीजन एंड सिमिलरली दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ओवर हेयर वुड आल्सो बी क्लोजर टू ऑक्सीजन सो हु गेन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऑक्सीजन और हाइड्रोजन दैट दैट वुड बी ऑक्सीजन उसका क्या चार्ज होगा इट्स गोइंग टू बी -2 एंड एच इज द वन दैट्स लूजिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो इट्स गोइंग टू बी +1 I said, remember, uh, just be very careful. If oxygen gains uh, these, I mean, if oxygen is attracting these electrons, and the electrons are closer to oxygen, so remember, us me, one electron, jo na, that is, I mean, one of the electron belongs to oxygen itself. So, oxygen is only gaining one electron. One to its capna tha, pehle se tha. Idhar se bhi, if oxygen gains uh, these electrons, then it's only gaining one of the electrons. Like the other one was, wo pehle se us capna hi tha. So. so it's only gaining two electrons so it's going to be minus 2 and h if the electrons are further away from h h would be losing one electron like one of them was its own electron that said so it would be losing just one electron like exactly oxygen has power to attract both electrons Read up. Uh, are you in the class? Chalo. Acha. So, the, so the thing is, even though it's covalent, oxygen doesn't have a charge of minus two. Like, and if somebody is going to ask you who gains electrons, who loses electrons in this uh, entire molecule, then it's going to be oxygen that gains electrons. How many electrons it gains? It gains two. पूरे गेन कर रहा है नहीं कर रहा दैट्स अ डिफरेंट स्टोरी इट्स नॉट कंप्लीटली गेनिंग दोस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ठीक है दैट्स ट्रू बट ऑक्सीजन यू गोइंग टू गिव ऑक्सीजन अ माइनस टू ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ठीक है सो रिमेंबर ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इज नॉट द एक्चुअल चार्ज ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ओनली टेल्स यू लाइक हु गेन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हु लूजेस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दैट्स इट लेट्स डू अनदर एग्जांपल लेट्स से यू हैव गॉट यू हैव गॉट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड राइट Double bond, right? So I've got, let's go. So I've got a carbon dioxide molecule. So the point is, uh, now over here there are four electrons being shared. So that's four electrons, four electrons shared over here. So the so the electrons are going to be closer to. How exactly oxygen is. is going to be uh, it's going to be more electro negative compared to hydrogen theek hai friend i mean oxygen is more electro negative so oxygen will i mean oxygen can, can only gain two electrons remember that oxygen just has room for two electrons oxygen is in group 6 so it's going to try and gain electrons it's very electro negative but it can only gain two electrons that's it theek hai friend is this clear अगर कोई तीसरे इलेक्ट्रॉन की बात करता ना ऑक्सीजन विल नॉट बी एबल टू गेन दैट थर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन बिकॉज ऑक्सीजन डजन हैव रूम टू कीप दैट थर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन हाँ मतलब अमाउंट द नंबर ऑफ एटम्स डोंट मैटर व्हाट जस्ट मैटर्स इज लाइक ओवर हेयर फॉर एग्जांपल यू गॉट आई मीन लाइक ओवर हेयर यू गॉट अ कार्बन आइटम So carbon is less electronegative. So that means these electrons would be closer to this oxygen. So the electrons over here would be closer to this oxygen. The oxygen has how many electrons gained? Here it's going to gain two electrons minus two. Not completely, but the electrons would be closer to oxygen. These are electrons. How many will be closer? This would be closer to this oxygen. So oxygen will have a charge of minus two because it's partially gaining those electrons. and how many electrons did carbon lose it would be plus 4 you get it lost it lost two electrons 
to this oxygen and lost two electrons to this oxygen. So it's going to be plus four. Is this clear? Yes, are you clear? So that did you get this, Oswa Mahaj? Yeah. So, so just remember, these are not the actual charges. These, these are the ones that are going to help us. So remember, you, you don't call this charge, you call it oxidation state. Uh, they're going to help you help us find out who gains electrons, who loses electrons, even though they're just only slightly gaining those electrons. These electrons are just slightly closer to oxygen, but we're going to assume that oxygen ends up gaining those electrons and that's going to be minus two. So some, let's do another example. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got nitrogen bonded to fluorine. So in this molecule, which of the atom is the one that's going to end up gaining electrons and which one is going to end up losing electrons? Like who's, who's more electronegative? TK, it's going to be fluorine. Fluorine is remember one of the most, fluorine is one of the most electronegative atoms in the whole, I mean, that's one of the, that's the winner TK. That's the one that's the most electronegative. So it's going to be fluorine, okay? So these are electrons, all of them would be closer to fluorine. This comes out fluorine gains one, minus one. These electrons would be closer to fluorine, so minus one, the oxidation state is minus one. These electrons over here would also be closer to fluorine, so it's going to be minus one. And you'll have your N, which would be plus three, okay? It ended up gaining, so it ended up losing three electrons. Is this clear? Yes or no? Is this clear? Yes. Raid, is this clear? Mahat, Oswa, Amna, is this clear? Mask clear? Mask clear. Yes. So just remember, uh, you've got ionic compounds where the charge is the actual charge. I mean, that's minus one, this is plus one. But then you've got covalent molecules where it's just, they're just slightly gaining and losing electrons, but you still give them minus one and plus one oxidation states. And uh, now the problem is, this is just the background, TK. The problem is, it's very time consuming, like to find out oxidation states. So now we're going to learn how to find oxidation states quickly. How to find oxidation states quickly. Because we are only interested in finding out who gains electrons and who loses electrons. So how to find oxidation states. And we're going to establish some rules for finding oxidation states. The rules are neutral element, that is zero. So whenever you have a neutral element, it is going to have an oxidation state of zero. That's, that's rule number one. Uh, example of that is you've got H2, Cl2, you've got a sodium atom. They all have zero charge. Okay, so a neutral element is going to have an oxidation state of exactly exactly zero. I said, then you're going to have number two. Number two, you're going to talk about uh, compounds. Now, when you talk about compounds, uh, nee, NaCl is a compound. I talked about, I was talking about neutral elements. My elements ke saath koi cheese nahi hai. There's, it's not a compound. Afi, is this point clear? But the compounds ki baad ab, ab, ab hum shuru kar hai, hai? We're, talk, we're going to talk about compounds now, hai? Compounds are found when you have two different elements. So compounds, the rule for compounds is, for metals it's easy. Group one is going to be plus one. Group two would always be plus two. And in the compound, uh, 
कितनी प्लस वन था वो दिस इज प्लस वन ग्रुप टू इज प्लस टू यू गॉट ग्रुप थ्री विच इज गोइंग बी प्लस थ्री अच्छा फिर आपके पास है कि uh, और क्या ऑक्सीजन इज आई मीन दैट्स रूल नंबर वन अच्छा ऑक्सीजन इज गोइंग बी माइनस टू so most of the time oxygen is minus 2 because oxygen is one of the most electronegative elements usko kisi ke sath bhi jod do na it's usually just minus 2 because it always gains electrons it's always very very electronegative uh but there are some exceptions except in peroxides and with f like when you born an oxygen with an f f is more electronegative like if you born it with an f so f is probably the only element that is more electronegative than oxygen so f is more electronegative so electrons would be closer to f which is why f would be minus 1 f would be minus 1 and oxygen in this case would be plus 2 so only with only with f uh that you have oxygen being plus 2 one otherwise it's always always most of the time it is it is minus 2 and also in peroxides like in h2o2 i'll give you an example of h2o2 what is the oxidation state of oxygen in h2o2 in h2o2 oxygen is this is an h2o2 molecule now in h2o2 oxygen is only able to gain one of the electrons like uh, it's able to gain the electrons from h and this oxygen also is able to gain electrons from h because oxygen is more electronegative compared to h so oxygen becomes minus 1 oxygen is not able to gain the electrons in the middle because both of them are equally electronegative so this oxygen will not be able to gain these electrons this oxygen will also not be able to gain these electrons so these electrons would be perfectly covalent because both atoms are perfectly uh they have equal electronegativity so oxygen is only able to gain electrons from h over here so it's going to be minus 1 so peroxides mein oxygen is minus 1 and with fluorine oxygen is plus 2 but otherwise you can safely say say that oxygen is always minus 2 और फिर एक हाइड्रोजन का याद रखते हैं हाइड्रोजन इज सो हाइड्रोजन इज प्लस वन सो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम हाइड्रोजन इज गोइंग टू बी प्लस वन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम बट देर वुड बी सम एक्सेप्शंस so except in metal metal hydrides now with metals in the presence of metals hydrogen becomes minus 1 it's because na loses electrons becomes plus 1 h ends up gaining electrons becomes minus 1 because h like if you look at the look at the electronegativity table i mean h is less reactive it's is less electronegative than less electronegative than most of the non metals but it's more electronegative compared to all the other metals so when it's with metals h is the one that ends up gaining electrons so h with non metals is more is usually plus 1 loses electrons but h with metals it usually gains electrons so h is going to be h is going to be plus 1 most of the time but with metals it's going to be minus 1 so this is the stuff that you have to remember only this stuff and you can also add fluorine to it i mean you can add fluorine fluorine is always fluorine is the one that's always minus 1 so fluorine is the one that's always minus 1 so just two rules or three rules group 1 is plus 1 group 2 is plus 2 group 3 is plus 3 
oxygen is minus two hydrogen is plus one and f is always minus one with a few exceptions so we're going to learn how to use these rules for oxidation states remember because every time finding out uh, i mean i mean doing this thing is kind of uh, very difficult uh, so you need a simpler method of finding oxidation state so so this is just the background like what is oxidation state remember oxidation state is not the actual charge it's it's most of the time it's the partial charge most of the time you just want to know like electrons being shared but who gains those electrons like who gains those electrons more compared to the other one so that is what oxidation states tell you and remember these rules is this clear all of this in rules yes. I said remember these rules TK. make sure you write down these rules and in the next class we're going to learn how to calculate oxidation states like very quickly TK. what's the simpler method of finding oxidation states so TK, back you clear Emma is this clear is not is on is this clear Oswa Wafa Haya is this clear Yes or no, okay. I just thought, okay, uh, the more important thing is we did the background uh, in this class. We're going to do this in the next class. Okay, we're going to learn how to find oxidation states. So, okay, everyone, take care. Allah first. Locks. Sir? Anji. Sir, you board ki link share kar diega, sir. Uh, main kar uh, group pe post karo, balke, okay. Take it, sir. I love you. Okay, love us. Jeep. Joe, Prisana class, you got Kitna. Who can't upload? I'll share the link. I don't, I don't, I mean, I try to upload, but most of the time I don't upload actually. Uh, I'll share the link with you. Miss Group Kitna, I'm sharing the link. Or Google Drive ka link ka automatically upload hoti hai. maybe probably takes 30 minutes to upload. Like in, in the drive, it does get uploaded. Hai. To uska main link share karo, hai. Okay, love is.